Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Our gathering song is hymn number 311, as we gather at your table, number 311. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as your own. Teach us through. How to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ your great compassion, to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast, where triumphant love will welcome those who had been last and least. There no more will and be blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We have sung what the gospel will proclaim. The table invitation is all inclusive for the weak, the marginalized, the poor, those who are struggling, cooperating with grace to draw closer to the Lord. It is never a celebration of exclusion. However, as we'll see in the gospel so too often in our lives, we just don't see. We don't notice. And so we acknowledge our sin. Not simply what we do, but what we fail to do. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world 
have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your mighty power above all in pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacence in Zion. Lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches, they eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Praise the Lord. The Lord who opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just. The Lord who protects the stranger. Praise the Lord. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion from age to age. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith, lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony on the Pontius Pilate for the noble confession to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, 
who dwells in unapproachable light and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good in your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he might warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, then they will repent. And then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. There are some very poignant and practical reminders that this Gospel puts before us today. The rich man didn't cause the poverty of Lazarus. He didn't foreclose on his mortgage. He didn't rob him. He didn't swindle his money from him. He didn't refuse him a job. His sin was not that he had good food, he had a nice house, he had many friends, he could host a banquet. Banquets can be wonderful. Matter of fact, that's what Jesus uses to talk about the kingdom. He uses that image of the banquet. We've heard it many times. And so there was nothing wrong with the rich man's hospitality, his dinner parties, nothing wrong with those things that he had to enjoy of this life. And he did not cause any pain to Lazarus. His sin was simply he didn't notice him. He paid no attention. Self-absorption. The trinity of me, myself, and I. One of the greatest temptations that can creep into our lives. 
and yet off our lips fall the words, and I confess to Almighty God, I admit and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've sinned in what I've done and in what I've failed to do. Sins of omission often are not even called to mind. And yet when they are, we realize that we allow Christ often to pass by, unnoticed and uncared for, to sharpen our vision, to put us on alert, this gospel is proclaimed for us. Then there's the second part, recognizing the neglect, his great sin of simply not noticing. He begs Father Abraham to warn his brothers. And the response, of course, is they have the prophets. They've been told this. We can say it in the New Covenant. They have the proclamation of the gospel. They have the church. They've been told this. And the man goes, no, 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 no. But if a dead guy goes, he's going to scare him into it. And then they're going to believe. And why is the Abraham says, no, nope, they won't change, even if someone should go from from the dead. We saw it here in our own country, didn't we, a few years ago? We would never want 9-11 to happen again, but I would wish that 9-12 would have stayed. I remember we kept our parish church open, as we always do there, and now we do here. And the people who came to pray the people who came to Mass on Sunday, the people who realized how fragile our life is and all those things that we think we can control and be powerful of and be number one, that it all can come tumbling down. It lasted about a month. No, a dead guy would not have convinced the rich man's brothers. Unfortunately, the tragedies of 9-11 didn't convince many people about the fragility of life, the centrality of faith. And so, today, those things are just held up to us. Not for us to point to each other, but to look at ourselves and ask, what am I missing? What always slips away? Not to give a list of, well, I'm doing this and this and this and this, and that's more than most, but what am I missing? Part of the mission of being a disciple is to be on the lookout for opportunities. We do it individually in the personal situations of every single one of our lives, our families, our coworkers, our neighborhood, and we do it as a community. And you know, over these past few years, we've been in this process called moving from maintenance to mission, and we're almost done the moving from maintenance as we've reduced the physical structures, as we're improving the physical structures, and as we are about in phase three to tackle the last, this holy hill, this place that was first for the Catholic support list, in which we will give glory to God and conclude that maintenance mission. But over these years, we've moved from maintenance to mission. To opening up more deeply the truth of our faith, celebrating more reverently and authentically the sacred liturgy, and noticing and being mindful and stepping out for the Lazarus at our door. There is a wonderful tradition in this parish, decades old now, that is embraced and supported with the time and the talent of those who serve as volunteers and with the generosity of so many who never have it too far from their heart. Through Portsmouth Catholic Share, Corpus Christi Parish shows that we are not an entity unto ourselves, but an entity that continually reaches out to embrace all. And there have been many whose physical needs were helped. And through that unexplained kindness and generosity, they began looking at this God that these people are serving 
and striving to imitate. And they are among us. But as we've been moving from maintenance to mission and increasing mission, we've moved beyond the local response of SHARE. We've moved beyond in our own area through the initiative of a parishioner who took it upon himself and then helped to ignite our young adult ministry. And so every Saturday, breakfast provided at crossroads, relationships developed. Folks now part of our community of faith having their souls fed. And that became contagious with others who now regularly go and provide meals. And mission expanded even further when we recognized that we are part of the body of Christ that is universal as Catholics. And so the outreach to Ecuador that began with simplicity, that grew in intensity last year, and that will continue with regularity every year. Volunteers that included senior citizens, men, women, young adults, and youth. No, it's not just words. Yes, we are about to embark upon beautifying the house of the Lord, repurposing this property for our use, and there's nothing just as there was nothing with that rich man wrong with those things. There would be something wrong if it's for everybody else but God. Remember, Judas said that. A false poverty. But it must happen hand in hand with the recognition and the ability to bend low, to stretch our hand to those who are in need, whether it be of body, mind, or soul. <coughs> Indeed, the hungers of the human family are many. May the Lord grace us as we seek to satisfy the body, the heart, the soul, knowing that indeed, in the latter case, that's food that is nothing less than Jesus himself doesn't just lead to the next meal, but to life eternal. Let us go into this week considering perhaps there might be something, someone, intentionally or not, that we're overlooking. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come, Amen. Let us in confidence bring our needs before a generous and loving God. For our church and parish community, that we may respond with courage and conviction to Christ's call to true discipleship, bearing tangible daily witness to what we profess, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the poor and overlooked around us, that our eyes and hearts will be open and responsive as we offer them hospitality, care, and help in their basic needs, both in our individual opportunities and through our ministry of Portsmouth Catholic Share. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders and those seeking election to office, may they see their responsibility to the most vulnerable, the poor, the preborn, the sick and elderly, and the victims of violence and abuse, and inspire many to action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our hearts today and for those we carry here for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in peace of Christ, especially Gregory Guerrera, for whom this holy mass is offered, that he may be carried by the angels to the heavenly banquet of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In trusting faith, we entrust these needs to you, O Lord. We pray especially your grace upon the men of our community on retreat, that you who begin the good work bring it to completion in us, for our good and for your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is hymn number 616, Tend the Ground, number 616. Sowing hope 
and peace where none is found. In selfless love, God's love abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <coughs> Grant us, O merciful God, that this offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you've given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and we sing a hymn of your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love, and when is once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper. He took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Then, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom was led, who was led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people be raised up by a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 the Savior's command that are formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The refrain for our communion song can be found on the inside cover of your hymnal. It's refrain number four, we come to your feast. Refrain number four. and hillside, the grain by which we're fed. We come to taste the presence of him on whom we feed, to strengthen and connect us, to challenge and correct us, to love in word and deed. We come to your feast, we come to your feast, the young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least, we come to your feast, we come to your feast. We come to your feast, 
and your sign. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. Forty days for life are underway, and thank you to so many who have already made time for the, uh, spending some time in prayer and peaceful witness in front of the Lovering Center. Details of all of that are in the bulletin. October 13th falls on a Sunday. It's the anniversary of Our Lady's apparition at Fatima, and it's the month of the Rosary. And so you'll notice we're having a very special celebration on October 13th, the Rosary for Life at 3, and the Mysteries will be led by members of our Young Adult Ministry. And then we're all invited at 6 o'clock to the Parish Center for a screening of the movie Unplanned. This movie is not an easy one to watch, but it reveals the truth. Uh, many people are afraid of the truth. It's why many didn't even want to advertise it. It's why theaters were going to show it once until demand changed that. So if you did not get a chance to see it, save that Sunday night, October 13th. Uh, those of you who are uh, young adults, 18 to 30-something, uh, you're invited to this parish event as well, and for young adults between the rosary and the movie, of course, there's going to be food, uh, so they can check that out. Um, pray for me tonight. They've been hiking up Mount Chikoro all day, and they're going to converge on the rectory at 6 to be fed by me. <laughs> at least if you've been hiking all day long and hiked about 10 miles, no matter what I throw in front of them, it will be good. To all uh, junior high and high school students, grades 7 through 12, we remind you that tomorrow is the deadline to get in um, the permission slips from your parents if you want to join Dave on Friday night. Uh, nationally known speaker, 
uh, Matt Fred is coming to Exeter, and we will be meeting here in front of the church at 5 o'clock, uh, heading down to Exeter uh, for the hour-long presentation, then back for some pizza and fellowship. But tomorrow night has to be the deadline. We have to call in our number on first thing Monday morning and then make preparations and stuff for the others. So our young adult minister, uh, Dave Perella, is leading this effort, and some other young adults will be with him as chaperones. So we're encouraging our youth. Uh, and there's also other things coming, so be sure to read the bulletin on all of those things. Don't forget Parish Mission, Fullness of Purpose, October 16th, 17th. Parents, you, ministry and understanding of faith is not just about what we send our kids to, but what we come as a family to. October 16th and 17th, Ken Yasinski is definitely a family event. This young man, father of five young children himself, um, has a very dynamic presentation for us to help us to live with greater purpose and commitment to our Catholic faith. There's a bright, full-page ad in this week's bulletin once again. Now's the time to invite family, friends, people who are not connected with church. Uh, you will not be disappointed. But parents, I re remind you, it isn't just about programs we drop kids off to or schools we send them to. The greatest witness is what we do as priority in family. Uh, and that's coming up. A great opportunity with the movie Unplanned and with um, the parish mission. Mostly all of the adult enrichment opportunities start this week. Mass readings explain the Gospel of Mark. Uh, the Bring It Home program for faith formation starts next weekend. So there's an awful lot in the bulletin. So uh, be sure to read it real carefully. And finally, in the center of the bulletin, on one side is a summary of this past year. The fiscal year for us ended June 30th. And on one side, I kind of summarize that year and the life of the parish. This parish is growing increasingly more uh, dynamic and alive. Today, today we had two young, wonderful couples pledge life and love in marriage. Many parishes haven't seen weddings in forever. We had two young couples today. We have two next Saturday as well. Uh, and so between mass and confession and a wedding and a wedding and confession and now this mass and supper cooking next door, Old buildings, the legacy of the past, now being fully alive, the needs of the present. Along with that summary in the bulletin is our operating financial report from the last fiscal year. I told you a number of years ago that I was not comfortable with the fact that every year that operating budget was ending with a deficit that we had to take from reserve. And the reason for it was because we were putting Band-Aids on underutilized and, and buildings that were not serving our purpose. We've made some difficult decisions. But today, as you look at the operating report from the last year, you'll see that we have invested more than ever in ministry, in sharing the faith. We're not hoarding money, but we're redirecting it to what we're supposed to be about to the service of the poor. And we ended the operating year with a $66,000 surplus. Indeed, when we look at this, I think it's very appropriate that it be on this particular Sunday with this particular gospel. Rejoicing in what we have. In just a few weeks, we'll be looking at what we need to do with the restoration of this beautiful church and repurposing of these grounds but it's all hand in hand with grabbing Lazarus, not only throwing him something, but inviting him in. We're heading in the right direction. Pray we keep doing that. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O oh Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, in whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Please join in singing hymn number 473, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 473. Yeah. 
smile.